is there. It's a go. And Georgie Wolf is at the whip on Sea Biscuit to keep him up. And they're coming to me head and head. War Admiral on the inside. Wolf is driving Sea Biscuit. And Sea Biscuit is outrunning him. Sea Biscuit is coming to me. One length, two lights in the lead. And he came right over two lengths. He goes by me. Sea Biscuit by two lengths. War Admiral right on his heels. Kutzinger sitting still and biding his time. And it's Sea Biscuit by a length and a half down the back stretch. The halfway down that back stretch. And there goes War Admiral after him. Now the horse race is on. And I'm losing him there. They're head and head. But I'll catch him here in just another 50 yards. They're head and head. And now War Admiral has a head advantage. And Sea Biscuit's got a head advantage. They're going into that far turn. Head and head. And it is either one. Take your choice. And right there, they're coming into view now. And the head and head Sea Biscuit on the inside. By a neck with War Admiral second. A big throng dashing across the track. Oh, across the infield there, coming for this fence. They've come into the stretch here in just a second. And they're head and head as they head for that home lane. Watch for them now as they turn into the stretch. Head and head. Both horses under a drive. This is a real horse race. Just what we hope we get. They're head and head. And both suckies driving. It's the best horse from here in. They've got 200 yards to come. It's horse against horse. Both of them driving. Seabiscuit leads by a length. Now Seabiscuit by a length and a half. Wolf has put away his whip. Seabiscuit by three. Seabiscuit by three. Seabiscuit is the winner by four lengths. And you never saw such a wild crowd. Seabiscuit the winner by four lengths. Trying to drown this crowd out here. Twice he's lost the $100,000 handicap by a nose. Now if those valuable pins can span the gap today, he'll try again. As Smith hoisted him into the saddle, Pollard felt his confidence return. You know the horse, and the horse knows you, Smith whispered. Bring him home. For Pollard, it would all come down to that. Exactly one minute and 36 seconds after the bell rang, he found himself bottled up with sea biscuits straining at the reins. There was no way around the front runners. Finally, at the far turn, a lane opened barely wide enough for the horse to get through. Pollard leaned forward in the saddle and shouted, Now, Pop! At the touch of the whip, Sea Biscuit broke through and exploded into the lead. He and Pollard scorched down the stretch and under the wire, all alone. Sea Biscuit had clocked the fastest mile and a quarter in Santa Anita's history, the second fastest ever run on an American track and had surpassed the world money-winning record by more than $60,000. Some called it the greatest comeback in the history of American sports. Oh, wrote columnist Jolly Roger, that I have lived to see this day. In the winner's circle, Pollard sat straight-backed on his horse, his red hair matted with sweat. Beneath him, Sea Biscuit was still, calmly munching the flowers from his victory wreath as dozens of camera bulbs flashed. Don't think, Pollard said later, he didn't know he was the hero. He suffered career-ending injuries and surmounted them. He ran until a very advanced age. And he was ridden by a jockey who suffered calamitous accidents, who somehow pulled himself together, two crippled old men, to go out in a blaze of glory and do great things. And to a depression-ridden, anxious, frightened nation, it must have come like, like a great sunrise. I think my father understood that it was just by chance that he became famous. So many millions have talent uh, or beauty and they haven't been in the right place at the right time. They haven't drifted into, you know, an arena uh, where they 
could be appreciated. Uh, I think he knew that very deeply, uh, that it was all luck. I think that together, Seabiscuit and he made a whole comet, a star, a ball of light. There is something quintessentially American about everyone in this story and about the ability to triumph over hardship. That's the journey. That's the journey toward the American dream. This country was built on that. And he embodies that more than anybody else. He, he's an extraordinary story that way. <laughs>